you ever find yourself as a parent feeling guilty and then allowing that guilt to influence the choices that you make as a parent? Well, today we're going to talk about why that's probably not a very good idea. So this channel, Principle Based Living, is, is really about helping you to find more fulfillment, more happiness, more joy in your life. And so what we talk about on this channel are principles or laws that govern this world in which we live. And it's really important that we understand what those laws and principles are, because in life, it's our beliefs that drive our behavior. And if we have beliefs that are not in alignment with truth or with principles, then we're going to behave in accordance with our beliefs, but we'll end up not getting the outcomes in life that we want. So I just want to remind you what the three foundational principles are that we talk about of principle-based living, because it's important to understand those as we talk a little bit more about guilt and why using or allowing guilt to motivate the decisions and choices that you make as a parent are not beneficial for your children. So those three foundational principles are, number one is accountability, which says that each one of us are accountable for our own life. And we can't give that away to anyone else and we can't take it away from anyone else. The other thing that I wanna mention is, if there are some things that you hear on this video today that don't seem to fit with what you believe, I would just encourage you to keep an open mind and to consider it and to see if the things that we talk about are not self-evidently true. So accountability is the first principle. You're accountable for your life. What that also means is that each one of your children are ultimately accountable for their life as well, not you. So you have some responsibility for them as a parent, as far as teaching them and keeping them safe and providing for them as they are younger and as they grow older. But ultimately, each of your children are responsible for what they do with their life. And the second foundational principle is the principle of choice. And that principle says that in any circumstance or situation, we get to choose what we do in that situation. So we choose our behavior. We also get to choose what we think and we choose what we feel. And nobody can take that away from us. And the third foundational principle is the principle of control. And there are only three things in this life that each one of us have control over. Our conscious thoughts, our emotions, and our behavior. So just looking at those three foundational principles, it may change the way that you look at your role as a parent. Because sometimes we feel like our value as a parent comes from the choices that our children make. So if our children choose to be successful in their life, then we feel like we have been successful as a parent. So if our children do well, then that means we did well. But here's one of those things to look at is that true? Is it self-evidently true? Or are there some kids that grow up in families where maybe there was practically no parenting, so there was a lot of neglect, or maybe there was a lot of abuse that went in or went on in that family. And those kids turn out to be very successful and to make good choices in their life. And then maybe you know of other children that come from a family where the parents were really good parents and they did everything that they could to teach and to support and to encourage. And those children ended up making choices that were not in their self-interest. So ultimately, is the parent responsible for their child or does the child get to choose how they want to live their own life? You could teach your child all of the correct principles and they could still choose to ignore them. So it's important then to understand as a parent that I don't control my children. All I do is influence them and I can create an environment or strive to create an environment for them to learn. And then there are things that I can do to 
influence that learning, but I can't make them learn. Again, the only person that I have control over is myself. And so my number one responsibility is to myself. Your number one responsibility is to yourself. So you're responsible for your own happiness, your own success. You can even look at this in, in your marriage or your relationships. You don't even have complete control over those relationships and whether they turn out the way that you want them to be or not. But you do have control over how you respond to your spouse or your partner. You have control over how you respond to your children. Okay, so that's the foundation that's important to understand as we talk about now guilt. So what is guilt and where does it come from? And does it serve any useful purpose? Well, guilt comes from when we make decisions and choices that tend to go against our values or what we know or believe about ourselves. So it could be from making mistakes or it could be from making conscious choices, doing things that we knew better, but we did it anyway. And so when we do those things and we experience the consequence of doing those things, we tend to feel bad about that behavior or that choice. So that feeling bad, that those feelings of guilt are really opportunities for us to learn because that tells us there's something that we did that didn't benefit us, that really didn't give us the outcome that I wanted. But here's the other thing to remember. So none of us are perfect, which means we're all going to make mistakes. And the way that we learn is through making mistakes, but we need to pay attention to the consequences of the choices that we make because when the consequences are not what we want, then that tells us that there's something in what we're doing that is not working. Could be our behavior, and then it could also be our thoughts and our beliefs. So we wanna become aware of what are the thoughts and beliefs that are driving our behavior and make sure that those thoughts and beliefs are based on principle. So in this sense, guilt can be a positive thing in our life because guilt can motivate us to change because of the feelings of guilt that's uncomfortable and that we don't like and we don't want to continue to feel those feelings. Then we change our behavior and make different choices moving forward. So guilt can serve the purpose of helping us fulfill the real goal of our life, which is for us to grow and learn and become the very best person that we can become. So let's talk about guilt now though in relation to decisions that you make as a parent. Oftentimes as parents, because we're not perfect, sometimes as parents, we unintentionally do things that maybe was not the best way to parent. So sometimes we may lose our temper, we may say some words that, that we really don't want to say as a parent. Sometimes we may take actions that we don't want to take as a parent, and then we feel bad about what we did as a result. And then we have this, this feeling or this idea of we wanna make it up to our child. And now let's talk about a couple of other things before we address that. There are other times um, as a parent where things happen to our children that are out of our control or that are partly due to decisions and choices that we make. So sometimes there are divorces. Sometimes we may have a spouse that mistreats our children, or sometimes there are things that happen to our children that shouldn't have happened. And we feel responsible because we didn't protect them. We didn't keep them safe. There's lots of different scenarios where as a parent, I may, I may feel like I did or didn't do something that let my child down, that caused my child some pain, some unhappiness, caused them some loss in their life. And again, I feel responsible for that. Now think about this for a minute. And again, this may be one of those things that at first uh, you may not agree with, but is there anyone that can hurt you. And again, right off, we tend to say, well, yeah, there are people that say things or do things that, that, that hurt us. But the truth is they only do things that, that influence us. We get to choose how we respond to that behavior. We get to choose whether we allow it to hurt us or not, because anything that happens to us, we get to decide 
what meaning we want to attach to that, and we get to decide what we want to do in response to it. So Napoleon Hill said, within every adversity or every problem or every challenge is the seed of an equal or greater benefit, which means for every negative or bad thing that happens to us in, in our life, within that exists something of equal or greater benefit. So when we look at it that way, there's nothing really that happens to us in our life that can hurt us unless we choose to allow it to hurt us. And so the same thing holds true to our children. But now you may say, yeah, but my children don't know that and they don't understand that. And that may be true. So part of our role as a parent is to help teach them and educate them so that sooner rather than later, your children can begin to know and understand that they are in control of their own life, that nobody can hurt them, that they get to choose how they see themselves, how they see others, and how they respond to others. And we can teach our children that in two different ways. One is by talking to them and sharing with them and educating them, but then the other way is by modeling it in, in our own life. So what do we do and how do we handle situations in our life that don't go the way that we expect or want them to go? And how do we respond to that? So as a parent, if I know and understand that, then when bad things happen, I can just know that that is part of life. There are things that happen in life that are unfair. There are things that happen that shouldn't happen. And we have no control over those things. But we can look at all of those things as opportunities opportunities to learn from and to grow from that actually help us become stronger and better and more of who we are. So if your child experiences some difficult things in their life, which they will, think about what you are teaching them based on how you respond to those things that happen to them in their life. If you jump in and try to rescue your child and protect them, the underlying belief if you're taking care of everything is that you don't believe that they are capable of handling it or doing it for themselves. Whereas if I'm able to stand back and I prov provide support, I provide love, and I'm there to encourage and to help educate them and to teach them and maybe to help them change their perspective of that situation, but I allow them to work through it and to grow, to grow through that, the message that I'm sending them then is that I believe that you are capable, that you are strong, that you can handle this. And it's not my responsibility to fix everything for you. And so if I'm coming from a place of guilt where I feel responsible for the things that have happened or didn't happen to my child, and I want to step in and I want to make it all right, I want to make up for the things that have happened maybe in the past, the truth is you can't make up for anything that happened. All you can do is to move forward and again to teach your child and help them learn from that experience to recognize that they are responsible for their own life. May not be responsible for everything that has happened to them, but they do get to choose the meaning that they attach to it and the way that they want to respond to that event or situation. As you do that and as you model that in your own life, so as you take accountability for yourself, as you move away from blaming others and choosing how you want to respond and turning the negatives into a positive and finding the benefit in every seed or in every adversity. Your modeling of that behavior, your living that will teach your child and then you'll also have the opportunity to not only show them, but then teach them when those opportunities arise for them. As you do this, your child, well, I was gonna say that your child will become strong and capable, but the truth is you don't have control over that. So if bad things happen to your child and they choose to be a victim as a result of that and to make poor choices, there's nothing that you could do to make them do something different. All you can do is influence it. So again, ultimately you have to remember that your child gets to choose what they want to do with their life. But as you continue to live your life in a healthy way, 
you're going to be an example or a model for them to see that if they don't like their life, that it's possible for them to create a life like yours. So just remember that guilt is there as a tool to help us learn and to grow and to improve. So if there are things that I've done as a parent that maybe I wish I wouldn't have done, I can't really make up for that, but I can learn from it and I can make better decisions and choices moving forward. And I wanna send the message to my child is that, yeah, we live in a life where people are imperfect, people make mistakes, bad things happen, but that doesn't mean that we can't be happy and we can't have a successful life. Those are just opportunities to learn from, to grow from, and to help us make better choices moving forward that will give us the outcomes in our life that we're truly seeking. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to know more about who we are or to get more helps in parenting, visit our website at principlebasedliving.com. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos that will help you with challenges that you face in all areas of your life. And if you're watching this on LinkedIn, make sure and follow me here.